July of 2023, an important Nintendo game will be released. One that has built up a lot of excitement in people, and Nintendo has been helping cultivate and grow that excitement before launch, almost like it's a plant. It's Pikmin 4 that's coming in late July, and they've recently released the first and second Pikmin games on the Switch. The third is already on there because Nintendo is like, we need to get people into Pikmin. I'm all for it though. And although I wish I had the fun money budget to pull off getting all four games, I kind of don't. So I researched the lore myself and prep for experiencing the Pikmin 4 game. Luckily, Nintendo is still cultivating this hype Pikmin has in the ground and blossoming it. So they released a demo of Pikmin 4. And here's my experience with the perspective of a brand new Pikmin fan. Please, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well from like the point of view of like a returning fan or if you played the demo, what you thought, anything like that or whatever. I appreciate all of it. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe if you like the content and yeah, let me know your thoughts as well. Let's get into this. Immediately, we got some Animal Crossing language type of narration, which I like. Going over the icon of the franchise, Captain Olimar or at least the one that kind of started it all. He encounters strange creatures known as Pikmin while he's stranded on a mysterious new planet, and the Pikmin love carrying things. It is innate. Like, Olimar just says it's an innate thing, and I believe him because it looks like they were creatures made to carry things, and that's their priority. So far, this aligns with the lore, but Pikmin 4 boldly asked, hey, Let's add space dogs to this game. And so, Olimar is introduced to Moss. Adorable pup from all angles except front facing sometimes because the eyes kind of unsettle me. This whole initial bit is a tutorial town from inside a home and you're gathering stray Pikmin and exploring. It's fun. You're learning the controls. It doesn't take long, however, to come across a creature. I wasn't prepared for the battle music. It's intense. Right off the bat, I was ready to get into it, but sadly, it didn't last very long because this is the very first creature you come across, which means that fighting it will be over quickly. No matter how much you suck, go ahead, run right into the spikes, it's fine. But once this creature is defeated, you can get off Olimar ship part that has the power to send a distress rescue signal. It was heard. The rescue operation would involve six highly trained professionals and another space puppy. Perhaps they weren't warned beforehand that this planet just seems to have a pull to it that makes spacecrafts want to reach the ground as fast as possible, resulting in another cataclysmic crash. Very lost loss indeed. I don't know who's making the decisions at Rescue Corps HQ because they said do it again. Meaning they sent you, the rookie player, off to crash land just like the others had. Finally, character customization. This is where it all begins. Although the options felt limited, I had to do some complementary colors with blue and orange. But I didn't know just how much impact the spacesuit color had on the color scheme of the entire game. You'll see orange in many places. But with that complete, you set off. Surprisingly, against all odds, you don't crash. Yeah! It's the protagonist power, I suppose. Oh no, whose dog is this? I don't see a name on that orange collar. But maybe it shoots out an ID because that's Ochi, a member of the crew. That was easy enough to find the first member. What's behind here, I wonder? Another one! His name is Colin. He's the communications guy. The one who communicated to HQ that they're gonna need another rescuer. Now that we're here, we're off to find the SS Shepherd. The way these characters shuffle around and move is so cute. This whole game is very cute. Moving ahead, there's a secret hole under the dirt. Ochi digs it up because he's such a good boy. And ta-da! cave system unlocked. We have to jump inside because we're explorers and rescuers, right? Although I haven't experienced the cave system that was added to Pikmin games, I see a lot of people expressing excitement, and that's nice to see. Soon after falling into the hole, Ochi senses something. We move ahead and what's this? The captain! She's making a lot of noise and surrounded by slug things, and the noises probably don't help, but I like the added touch. Hopefully it doesn't make the slugs rage or anything. Ochi, the good boy, is heading out to the rescue, knocking out slug monsters left and right. We saved the captain. Wow. Her name is Shepard, like the rocket. With more of Ochi's help, we're able to get out of the cave. 
pop right back up where the spacecraft is. It's a little more smoky than the last time they all saw it, but communications expert Colin was able to fix the overheated engine since he's handy with a wrench and all that. But the ship's energy stores went up in literal smoke, so it's empty. Looks like the rescue corps will need to send their eighth rescuer. Wait, wait, Captain Olimar has logs of information, including information on turning sparklium from sparkling objects into energy. The plot is aligning, and someone's gonna need to be able to carry that treasure. I think you know what's coming next. It's the good Papochi. Once again, proving that he is an adorable treasure to this whole operation and the game. But the thing Ochi drags back is a strange onion that disperses our little guys. Out pops a long-nosed red Pikmin. Adorable, and about the size Ochi is. They make fast friends while the captain shakes. The task of cultivating little creatures is clear, and I feel like I'm building an army. I never knew what Pikmin was about, and only thought it was a game about multitasking, but no. Dandori is the game. Finding amazing and detailed treasures and watching Pikmin carry them away is also a huge treat and a huge part of it. I cannot wait to see what treasure lurks throughout the entire game not just under this limited demo scope. I'm super excited. But once the treasure's collected, gets plopped into the ship, which now has enough energy to survive idly. Surprisingly, that's not the end of the demo. This is a generous demo because it ends once you collect 1500 sparklium, even the area to explore. You know, it's very rich in content and things to do for a demo, you know? We get, and Although I say demo, but this is basically the first part of the game, but I appreciate it so much. We get access to the Sun Speckled Terrace. The game is incredibly beautiful to look at, and I'm sure you can agree once you're watching it. You know, we're watching the same thing here. It's gorgeous. The environment feels rich. The creatures are super creative looking and a sight to see. And the treasure really does sparkle in their own artistic way. Like just existing naturally in such a beautiful environment and then looking at them like even just differently by their descriptions and stuff like that or their names the pikmin running around only adds to the fun images on the screen it makes me so eager to jump into more with the full game experience it's super fun to explore the area send pikmin to grab strange looking blue material back to base and then also see them in action fighting with the creatures found all over my favorite thing is to watch him carry the lifeless bodies of the fallen monster creatures after a quick victory, I think I've heard Pikmin is compared to multitasking and managing troops. And I'm starting to get it. Just don't forget Dandori. There's a cave to hop into and once I hid underground, I could hear the commotion happening in the background. The blue creature thing has a new frost variant it looks like and it's blasting some innocent Pikmin. Ice Pikmin are introduced. This is one of the new Pikmin in this game, and they're super cute! Their ability to freeze things is so dang cool and so, so helpful. While the reds try their best to slam their heads into this strange jelly thing, the ice ones are able to freeze it, which makes it easy for the reds and them to smash. And thank goodness they did, because on the other side, happened to be another rescuer who is in need of rescuing. Once the Pikmin carry their lifeless body back to base, it's then that the ID is checked into, oh wow, this bald guy has strange glasses, his name's Russ, but hey, cool, he's an inventor type and material engineer. What luck! We sure do have a lot of material for him to look at. There's also a strange looking onion down here that turns out to not be an onion. It's a thing called Flarlick. Flarlick. Flarlick which seems to power up the onion. There seems to be a lot of new stuff added to Pikmin 4, so like I said, please tell me your thoughts and experiences as well, especially from, you know, the point of view of a returning player. But hey, the next day, Russ is awake and active, and so is Ochi, who suddenly grew large overnight, which means that he's capable of so much more, and also able to now ride. This is a highlight of the experience, being able to ride the space dogs and have the Pikmin cling on to them is such a fun thing to pilot, and an adorable image to watch. There's a lot of cutscenes in this, and they even interrupted my Ochi rush to let this creature live another one minute, so Colin can say, hey, these stones look weird, and Captain can be like, a Dandori master would want you to steal that thing's territory. And steal we do. Alright, disaster struck right after that because I knew Ochi could swim thanks to the trailers. I watched the trailers. So imagine my surprise when Ochi almost drowns once he gets too close to the water. Apparently he doesn't know how to yet, which is fine by me. 
because it only gives the ice Pikmin and their water freezing ability a place to shine. There's other Pikmin to find, like the ear Pikmin, or sorry, the yellow ones as Captain Olimar named, and then there's also people. I find another lifeless body and have the Pikmin bring it back, thinking it's another Rescue Corps member that has been rescued, but no, that's a stranger. Apparently a lot of civilian space travelers have also come to the area once they heard the word treasure in Almore's account, his, you know, radio signal. So now we have a treasure appraiser, and honestly, that's fantastic. Shnaz is a great loiterer to have around base. The florist is less so. Yeah, there's another lifeless body to revive in one of the underground spots, only to be tricked once again, thinking it was a useful Rescue Corps member, so I'm definitely excited about retrieving more civilians and actual crew members in the full game. The last bit of the demo that got me hooked, not by graphics or charm, like, those hooked, hooked me as well, but, you know, genuine curiosity about how this plot is going down, and what this story will be like. Because after a bit, you can encounter a pink-headed dancing dude surrounded by water. You can throw the ice Pikmin over there in order to cross. Also, I should have said it before, but Ochi swimming, you can get him to swim in this demo. And I know I talked about how he couldn't swim earlier, but I had to wait till like day five in the game before the captain reveals that she's been doing special training with Ochi in the bathtub to where now he can doggy paddle. Anyway, once you get close to the pink haired one, you notice that it's actually like a bushy fur face more than anything complete with a Pikmin leaf as well. The mysterious person hops into a hole, and after following them, we also get trapped in this Dandori heaven. A place where one can Dandori forever with Pikmin. I really like this. There's difficulty levels in it too, so like, I'm eager to do more of them. My Dandori was horrible though, on my first go at it. Everything was moving rather slow, not organized, not efficient, but the second time, I got it and the pink fellow collapsed in amazement dizziness. One would think that the ID badge would still work and we could identify him, but no. Somehow, he's like the missing no Pokemon glitch, who not, just no identity and won't wake up. I have no idea where this is going, but I'm so intrigued. Another thing that was introduced was the Dandori battle stuff, and it involves a red bushy leaf individual and a dog that, hey, wait. Isn't that moss? Does this mean that this is all more? The red one drags you into a Dandori battle competition, and the prize is another bushy fellow who is unresponsive. Once again, questions aside, the Dandori battle idea is credible. I love fighting side by side, stealing from each other, getting aggressive, seeing who can command their Pikmin army better than the other. But even after defeating him, he kind of vanishes and the purple one is also in possession of an error card. I'm hooked to see who that red Oldemar looking guy is, if we're gonna see more of Moss, what this bushy phenomenon is, if we're gonna find all the more in like a human state, what the other Rescue Corps people look like, you know, how many civilians are out there. There's a lot to get excited about. This demo was pretty generous, like, I think so. And it did a great job in getting me hooked into buying the full game. I intended to anyway, but this only solidified it a bit more, I think. So I'm really thankful for Nintendo for, like, pushing the hype for Pikmin, as well as Arlo. I, you know, I, I can't, like, say... Pikmin without thinking about Arlo. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. If you're a Pikmin fan, if you also play the demo, if you're new to the series as well, or even your own personal theories and ideas of plot or direction that might come in the full game, I'd love to hear it all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.